but I'm super excited to talk to the video editing queen and makeup extraordinaire herself, Miss Moose, y'all. Yes. So y'all, for those of you that are just now tuning in, this is our second episode, y'all, of Bod Tea, where we are talking to our mover and shaker women, y'all, who are talking body, boys, if it's boys, okay, and business, all right? So we got our three Bs that we talk about, but we always start with body. Okay, so Moose is our second guest for this series. Uh, we'll be interviewing women every couple of weeks. And for those of you, I'm sorry, so rude. For those of you who do not know, you're on Fluffy Girl Movement's channel. And I'm Chief Fluffivist, Abby Nicole. Uh, here at Fluffy Girl, we empower plus size and curvy women, 365 and 366 on Leave Your Honey through workshops, events, and platforms for amazing women like Moose to tell their stories their way, honey. We are rewriting society's narratives on what it means to be a plus size woman in today's society. So Miss Moose, yet again, thank you so much for being with us for the second episode of Bar Tea. Oh, I'm sorry, you're welcome. <laughs> Your, your pitch was so good. I was just listening. I was like, that's a nice pitch right here. I like this. <laughs> I was into you, it. I'm happy that you can marinate it, okay? I know. I was like, I'm into this. I like this. You are now in Maryland. Yes. But you were from the good old Missouri. Yep. Okay. So we always start off by talking body and body journey. But I think before we get there, we have to know a little bit more about moose. So born in Columbia or just raised in Columbia? Raised in Columbia. I was actually born in Denver, Colorado, if you can believe it. I know, like, I'm everywhere, so I just say I'm from Columbia. It's easier. But I was actually born in Denver. Um, and when my parents split up, we actually moved to Louisiana with my grandmother. And how we got to Missouri. Yes, so I lived in Ruston, Louisiana for, like, three years when I was, a, like, when I was a toddler. And how we got to Missouri was my mom was going back for her grad school program. And she was trying to choose a school. It was between that or, like, somewhere in, I think it was, like, Florida State University. And um, Mizzou was the best program for her. And uh, we packed up and we moved. And we were only supposed to stay there for a few years until she was done with school. And I ended up staying. You get sucked in. If y'all yeah. Colombia, you get sucked in. Oh yeah, pretty much. When I was a kid, um, I realized that I used um, I used the creative arts to express myself when I couldn't say what I needed to say. And I think that really helped build me as I'm, you know, growing into an adult now. So like definitely any, like any kind of arts painting, I used to paint, draw, I mean, everything you name it, because that was my way of expressing myself at a time where I didn't know how to. Yeah. And so y'all, for those that are just now Tony in, we are live with Miss Moose, y'all, video editing, okay, and also makeup extraordinaire, y'all. If y'all have not seen this face on Instagram, I don't know what rock you've been sleeping under, okay? And this is so, I feel like I'm in her set. It's crazy, because I've seen this gold wall <laughs> the time when I'm like, ah, I'm in the set. It's crazy. So y'all, ask uh, questions as you will, um, but we're going to continue with the interview. I'm zooming on in so I can see if anybody has said anything. Shout out to all of you all that are live with us now okay feel free to tag some friends on this live honey okay the more the merrier it is that type of part yes. of T. so yes. to get into the body piece of that so you were artsy fartsy kid okay you figured a few outlets that that really helped you develop your voice and things like that now moose were you a chubby kid or no yeah i was i was always a thick i was always a thick john okay. like you know, like, I look, I mean, I for all of my followers uh, who have seen my mom, I look exactly like my mother. She is a true Jamaican through and through. Uh -huh. Like, the, the body is an heirloom of the Dixon family. <laughs> like, that's just what it is. So, like, I was, and I remember, like, my aunties, I remember probably when I was, like, six or more like eight my auntie started realizing that like i was gonna be super curvaceous and so like my aunties would be like man where i need this girl big body i saw and i was just like i don't know what to tell you and i would go visit and they'd just be like why muslim why is your ass so big and i was like oh, man, i don't know him <laughs> yeah like i you know it's a it's, it's a Caribbean thing, and, like, it was like that my entire life. So I've always been curvaceous at, at any point in my life. So, okay, knowing that it's an heirloom, right, and, and knowing that you Jamaican descent, right? So when we start talking the islands, body, 
acceptance is looked at differently than it is here Completely in different. just the States. I mean, because right. they, they like, why is your ass so big? They know why your ass big, okay? It's part of the family. So what did body conversation? Uh oh, we got somebody throwing up the flag for you, honey. Hey, uh, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> big up, big up. <laughs> so what does what did the body conversation look like in your family? Um, it was hmm, it was very weird because I think like I think especially like my mom kind of understood, but she didn't get it. Um, cause like I said, in our family, like all the majority of our, you know, women are curvaceous. Um, and you know, in Caribbean culture, you know, the curvy you are, the better. Um, so it was kind of this, it was kind of this disconnect where it's like my mom understood, my family understood what I was going through, but to them, they were like, why is this a bad thing for you? Okay. And, um, and especially when I was growing up, like, I don't know if y'all remember, but like before Kim Kardashian was a thing, like it was actually bad to be curvaceous. Like everybody wanted to look like Kate Moss. When I was a kid, like it was really hard for me to accept. And it sucks now because I'm looking back at photos and it was really hard for me to accept my body because at that point it just wasn't, it wasn't okay to be yeah. curvaceous at all. And it was just weird because it's like, I felt that way and like, I didn't feel comfortable, but like my family was like, it's okay to be curvaceous. Like we like that shit. And like they couldn't. Like yeah. Here in St. Louis, we had a thing come, going on called Thicky Thicky Thick. I don't know if y'all heard of Nelly. Okay, but you start <laughs> at the bottom. Okay, you start apple bottom and thicky, thicky, thick girl and all of that shit. But it was thick within standards. And so, to give y'all a visual, if y'all know what the hell I'm talking about, think anywhere from Kim K. Think anywhere from Kim K. To uh, Serena Williams. Yep. Thick, right. Anybody with the gut and the extra, extra, it was like, oh, we don't want the cellulite, that. the double chins. Mm -mm. The, the double chin, we don't want that. So nope. Let's talk about that, Moose. Growing up in a in a neighborhood or in a community, a decent mix of black and white, but very thin ideals. Um, what did that look like for you in school? Like, what kinds of stuff did you used to do to kind of like hide yourself or shrink yourself or whatever ah, to fit in? A little I bit? had the um, I had the dreaded uh, tie the hoodie over your waist thing. That was probably that was probably Girl. like my hoodie was like for real for real my accessory. That was probably hands. from from hands. like fourth to seventh grade. <laughs> that was my thing. Um, what else? I used to wear super baggy jeans as well. Um, and it was crazy. And you know, it was interesting about Kim Kardashian because, like you said, there was an acceptable form of curvaceous, and then there was plus size. And it was interesting because when I was in high school, I was the acceptable form of a curvaceous mm -hmm. woman. And so okay. it was crazy because when, like, I would say, like, eighth grade down, I was, you know, judged for being curvaceous. And, like, I really hung around a lot of white kids. That's a whole other identity if you want to get around. But I hung around a lot of white kids. So, like, that my body type was not desirable. But then yeah. once I got into high school, I went to the black high school yeah. um, where there was more diversity. And when I was going into high school, I think I entered high school 2012, 2013. So that was when Kim Kardashian and the acceptable form of curvaceous was coming into play. And it was... Oh, I was going to say, it was a complete 180 for me because I went to being like, oh, you're fat, oh, you're ugly, to like, damn, are you looking good? And I'm going to school and like, you know, the boys are looking at me and I'm like, why are they looking at me? And my friends are like, bitch, like you cute. And I was like, for real? And they're like, Yusuma, Kim Kardashian is in, you look like her just dipped in chocolate. And I was like... Like seventh grade, it was like... You, I saw the glass ceiling. Yeah. And um, it was really interesting because I still had love for where I was. And it was just a really weird place because I knew that I wanted more. I didn't know what I wanted, but I knew that I couldn't get it here. Yeah. Um, so it like going into high school was a really weird phase because I was starting to experiment more starting to experiment more um, I kind of realized that I don't really want to live in Missouri forever. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it was just kind of, it was, it was weird. And then my mom actually left Missouri before I did. So it was me and my grandmother and my mom who lived in Missouri. My mom actually got a job and had to relocate.
I was going to be a beauty entrepreneur. I was like, how the hell did you get here? And I kind of looked back and I was like, I'm not really surprised. I did theater and that was the first time that I really fell in love with makeup. I had to wear my mom's makeup. She had, it was called Pink Flamingo Lip Gloss. And it was my favorite thing to wear. I mean, blushes and eyeshadow and mascara. It was my favorite thing. Um, so when I was in school, I had actually always loved makeup. But like I said, being in Missouri, there's not necessarily a market, especially in Columbia, there's not really a market for makeup artists. Um, and my mom, even though she's supportive of my career now, it was one of those things where she was afraid that I wasn't going to live up to my potential if I was a makeup artist in Missouri. So our agreement was you go to school, you get your degree, I'll help you. And then if this is what you still want to do, then that's fine. So yeah so i got into howard and um that was i don't even call that a culture shock that was in the cult that was damn near in a cultural electrocution because <laughs> it was like howard is its own like breeding ground of black excellence as it is yeah. so yeah and so it was like coming out living in the east coast permanently was one thing but like dealing with all these other walks of black life videos that's yeah. when i started being like oh well you could do like a little huh and then like this and then hey. that and then it, hey. yeah and it just kind of it took its own form and then when i realized you know it was really an experimental thing but then when i realized that i could use my makeup and my editing process to tell stories that's what really hit so my very first black history month series i did what was it 2018 um i just did that as um just to try I was like let me try it out I had no clue what the hell I was doing I just tried it out and I didn't really I didn't have an audience at that time it was just my classmates but the overwhelming amount of love and support and feedback that I was getting um that was like my aha moment like yeah. this is your thing and you take it and run with it and then that summer I had done um uh, I had done a series on like insecurities and talking about like my body you know my my body positivity journey um cutting my hair I was bald at that point so like my natural hair, hair journey and why I decided to go bald and like everybody just kept going with it and everybody just liked it and I was like and see, like that's it I think every strong content creator even when you don't know who the hell your audience is in the beginning right like you said you do a lot of experimentation you do what you love and it shines through and yeah. then you find your tribe because yeah. people gravitate towards that Okay, first of all, this is a black girl that does special effects uh, makeup, so now you might have cosplayers that like you, right? Yeah. But then you say, this is a, a curvy woman who is sharing her insecurities, and so now you got the plus community is looking at you, right? Yep. And then you see somebody like beauty influencers that are just like, oh, she just slayed that nude lip with that eccentric ass eyeshadow. I love <laughs> it, you know what I'm saying? So now you're tapping into three different types of audiences, but they're all tuning in to see looks. Right. Right. And so what did your first, if you can remember, uh, past like doing makeup for your friends and everything like that, what did your first like brand partnership paying deal look like? And how did how did you snag that? Okay. It was right after level up, because that was when everything like exploded for me. Now what's level, um, what's level up? Oh my god, you haven't I will have to send you that personally. Oh, I don't think I don't think we ever talked about this. Um, so how I got to be Moose Loves You was the level up challenge. You know, Sierra came up with level up. Yes, level up. Yes, yes. And it was crazy because I had seen a whole bunch of other makeup artists doing it to that song. Cause like that's kind of one of our um like one of our uh you know tricks to get engagement. You pick popular yes, songs. Of course. And um you know, I was still doing the transitions, but some, I was just like, why don't you, I was like, why don't you do a video to like the level up challenge and like you use your transitions. I almost didn't do that video because I knew how much work it was going to be, but I was like, girl, just try it. Yeah. And I was at 4,000 followers when I posted that video. I had, I was in an engagement group of like other makeup artists and I'd shown them the final edit before I posted. They were like, Muslim, you're going to go viral. And I was like, I'll probably, I was like, hopefully I'll hit 10K. I had hit 10,000 followers in two days. And I literally was, I was literally everywhere for months. By the time September hit, I was at 20,000 followers. I had been posted by like all the make makeup for black women found me. And they were like, oh my God, who are you? And I was like, bitch, I can't believe you're seeing me. Creation was not 
not strategically planning my content because that whole like that whole year after i had posted that video was like really good for me as far as uh, as engagement but what nobody realized is that i literally spent every waking hour of my time making content and so i had to be to maintain that momentum you have to be really really consistent i think i was posting oh my god i was posting almost two videos every week wow. um to maintain that and engagement. that's a lot y'all in the editing world so for the yeah thing, editing that she does hell when i edit these videos is a lot for me okay yes so for her to edit the things that she does and integrate integrate those transitions and shit make sure the music is good that she's on beat with the damn dip it takes a lot yeah but anyway go and ahead. i was and I was still going to school full time as well. Like I, like I told, like if you ask any of my roommates, um, they'll like all my old roommates. They'll tell you, like Musa's, like I've never seen anybody work as hard as her because it was go to school. I was still in extracurricular activities. It was go to school, do my homework, film. Sometimes I would film and edit in one night and sleep maybe four hours and then wake up and go to school the next day. And so my thing now, especially as a content creator, because people are like, oh, when are you coming back? When are you coming back? I am trying to, especially now that I am out of school, I am trying to formulate a content calendar strategy that works so for me. So she's struggling to finish school and she's trying to give y'all fresh content. That shit is no joke. To the point yeah. where you can go into months of hell, depression, hell yeah. months of burnout and you're thinking to yourself most of the time like imposter syndrome gets heavy like damn am i this person for real am i i'm still girl? dealing with it you know i'm still dealing with it and i deal with it as well and I, I think a really good um antidote to that like you said is planning what the hell works for you like we know that your audience would love to see a damn moose video every day of the week if you posted one but they don't right. understand the work that it comes in to creating those things. So you got to set something that makes sense for you. And so yeah. it's good that you took that time to say, all right, y'all. A very strong niche. Okay. Um, consistency and strong communication skills. Okay. So Woo! what's funny about this is that like you're like one out of I don't know how many women I've interviewed over my last 10 years doing this. Uh, one out of however many that's actually got it done in five seconds, y'all. So we said strong niche. We said consistency. And then we said, what was your third one? Uh, strong communication skills. And communication skills. All right. So let's talk about the strong niche. Why do you think that's important when you're monetizing your unique brand of you? That is, to me, the most important part, um, because especially, I can't necessarily speak on other, um, other industries, but specifically in the beauty industry, we, the, everybody is a makeup artist and a beauty influencer now. Nothing wrong with that, but if you want to monetize, if you want to be seen, um, if you want to be taken seriously with these brands, you have to have a very specific and strong niche that you operate in. Um, and I say that because that's really how you stand out, and it also gives you, what's the word? It also gives you a platform that brands can see and also see themselves in. Yes. Um, so like when it comes to like makeup you know everybody's like oh you know everybody did makeup at first because that's how they were to express themselves and those kind of things and that's a beautiful thing but that was in 2015-16 when beauty industry was just coming out and we had Jackie Ina and Patrick Starr they've yeah. already done that capitalized on it now everybody's done it you got to move on um so it's like the and it's like the more specific you are the easier it is to build your build a strong brand what do you feel like your niche is at this point <laughs> my niche is <laughs> Because I've had to really think about what is your niche? Because you do damn near everything. Okay. I like to describe my niche as using makeup to tell stories and tell stories about self-love. Um, what is it? I had it written down on my website, all nice and pretty. Um, <laughs> I, I wrote it down. Makeup to express, advocate, and entertain. Yes, that's what it is. Thank you. <laughs> I do my damn research, okay? Thank you. I really appreciate that because I was like, you are not about to go blank on the most rudimentary part of your oh, brand. Good. You express, advocate, and entertain. And I think you but yeah. that in that. In that yeah, that's, that's my niche. And, so that's niche you know, right? Okay. Yeah. So you said consistency. Why is that? And what does consistency look like for Moose? 
Oh, goodness. That's a terrible question to ask me right now, because if there's something I have not, if there's something that I have not uh, practice or practice that I preach it's consistency right now um, consistency is more really important because that's how you get yourself out in front of other audiences um, I made my name off of Instagram that's where my main platform is um, and I know for a fact I'm sorry there's all kinds of strings on me um, I know for a fact when it comes to Instagram consistency is the best way to build your following and also get the exposure you need to get those paid brand deals um, and I think people think that consistency means posting every single day, every second of the day. Consistency is what works for yeah, consistency is what works for you and your, you know, and your brand and your business. And I think the for me the biggest thing that I fell on was the consistency part cuz like I said I was making two videos a week. If I was an everyday makeup artist and I was doing looks like this all the time, that would be a lot easier for the me. The third to do. thing you said was communication skills. Why do we need communication skills to help brand our unique brand of us? Why? Um, definitely communication skills because when it comes to you building it, when you're working with brands as well, it's not just well. Also, communication with your audience. Um, you know, you have to also build that level of trust with your audience, but you also need communication skills in the business world if you're going to work with brands, because it's, it's never just a one time, like one and done thing. You have to continuously build a relationship with these brands that you're working with. Um, so I say communication as well, like understanding, like how to pitch yourself, how to continue that relationship with brands. Um, and you know, just being a good, you know, being an influencer is not just about getting the money and being seen and popping and those kind of things it's also creating yeah yeah it's also creating um relationships with brands and a mutual partnership between yeah. the two of you i always tell people moose like when it comes to doing things that that scare you um because because my other business that i have is actually helping people create video content strategy right nice. like things that are going to engage their audience and get them excited and when i hear people say oh i, I I'm too country. I speak too fast. I don't know if they want to hear from me. I'm like, yo, people are already tuning in for your product or your service. Imagine yeah. how this could blow up for you if you gave them more of you. People yep. buy from people, period. So here's the thing. I could get an Adobe workshop that could teach me about editing, but right. I identify more with Moose, right? Yeah. I see that she's a brown girl that's making this pop and she's making it happen and she's infusing her body positivity stuff and she's talking about her own insecurities out loud. I'm going to take the editing class off of the fact that I feel like I can identify with this person and she's not going to talk over my head. You know? Right. Yeah. So even when we're not ready, so to speak, everything is a teachable moment at this point. Everything. Yeah. So that was, it was a very interesting experience, but I also realized that I have a knack for teaching and I'd Come like on. to continue. So I will actually be reopening, um, the editing class let me see i was looking at july um so in july i will reopen the classes but not just that editing class but i will also be um teaching an editing 101 class because i realized so many people were like i don't know where to start um so i will also be teaching an editing 101 class and i will actually also be offering um makeup classes as well for sfx and everyday makeup so it will be an entire educational suite for people to come and learn how to you know be their own beauty entrepreneur and create quality content. It's important to know that, honestly, in order for you to teach, you only need to be a couple of steps ahead of the people that you're teaching. Yeah. Like, it's not about you knowing everything and anything and all of those types of things. It's like, we've watched you. We've seen a little bit of your journey. I want to get to where she at. Hell, I don't right. even know what the hell an N35 brush is. I don't know if it's a brush, I'm just saying. But, you know, I don't even know what the hell the brush is. So, right. at this point, Moose is 15 miles ahead of me. So right. there are spaces that we can all learn. Yeah. And you can always teach, you can always teach somebody something. Cause that was my biggest thing. I always thought that I had to be the best and I was waiting for myself to be the best. But the reality is that you're never going to be the best. You're always going to be a lifelong learner. And regardless of where you are in your journey of learning, you can always teach somebody else something different. So when I had my first editing class, I was saying things that like I thought were just normal and people were like, whoa, this is what you're doing? Oh my goodness. Let me get my pen and pad. <laughs> yeah. And they were like, this is how you if you like that you're gonna love this okay yeah you get to a makeup kit. What? yeah and they were like <laughs> they were like this is how you do this and i was like yeah don't you always do this and they were like no and i was like oh <laughs> well, there you go. but yes yeah, so, so, yes 
Oh my God, this has been so much fun. And see, yes. that time passed by real quick, right? I know. I'm like, damn, can I get another hour? Uh, like, I, I, I need to quit saying, I need to quit pitching to y'all, telling y'all it's going to take 30 minutes. In my mind, it was going to be an experience. Is that what you said? <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I said 30 to 40 minutes. 30 to 40 minutes on the high end, and it's like, Seconds, seconds. I'm hilarious. Well, I'll tell you this: if you want me to come back, because I know we didn't get to talk about everything, if you need to have another a number two, like I'm, oh. I'm down for it completely because oh this was God. great. Moose is a woman after my own heart, y'all. Moose, try, try. tell them your website and uh, your Instagram handle again. Um, all of my social medias, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, are Moose Loves You, and you can find my website www.mooseLovesYou.com. Exactly. Just bought my domain. Yes, honey. And as for Fluffy Girl Movement, follow us on Facebook and on Instagram. That's F L U F F Y capital G R L. There is no I in our name. Fluffy Girl Movement is on Facebook and Instagram. Y'all watch out for the next segment, okay? Of uh, God Tea. We're serving it up hot.